Saturday, Saturday fun day is here. It's myself, Joe Feeney, Mike Durbin, and Jeff, I've never, ever once said your last name correctly. So for now and forever, let me know how to say it so I know. Your punsage. Sitch. Yes. All right. I've been not, saying- not shit. Not Sid. <laughs> I've been sitch. saying pun yeah. kick. Your pun sick. Your pun sitch. Jeff, yeah. your pun sitch is here. Uh, close friend of mine, close personal friend, and most importantly, enemy of John Langland. So what got him on here today is uh, he's he's well versed in, in all the stuff that's been going on. He's seen some new trickery going on on Twitter. And what we're gonna do? We had uh, we, we we talked a little bit earlier today, Mike and I. We did some old clips with uh, Jeff Erstad, but right now we're gonna record uh, some closer to the present day. So, Mike, what you have is uh, the last uh, the last week or, s- or so of audio. So you have a clip from Wrestling with Reality, and then you have another clip from the next episode, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, this is the episode of Wrestling with Reality entitled How Can AEW Put the WWE Out of Business? They can't. End of episode. John's wrong. It's stupid. It's a stupid clickbait headline that no one listened to anyway. They skip pages just to hear you talk shit on everybody. So and now, But now we need to repeat it about 20 times over, right? Just to make sure, man, that we got it. Yeah. Now, John did this solo, right? So, unfortunately, we did not uh, hear from the simple man. Oh, my mistake. Was he on it? No, this is the one with Maxon. Okay. We're, but, so, first, we're going to do... First the, is the one that's solo for John, and then... Yeah, and yeah. Maxon, right? Yeah. All right, so this is his comeback episode. It's entitled AEW Fight for the Fallen and WWE Extreme Rules 2020 Preview Slash Predictions. And Have this is heard- John by himself. Have you ever heard the term manna from heaven? Yeah. Do you know what that means? Yeah, it's like, uh, a, it's not necessarily food, but it's, you know, it's like a bread. life-giving substance from, yeah. God, from God to his disciples. Yeah. So it's, it's like bread, basically, and it comes down to feed the hungry, and they're so happy, manna from heaven yeah. to help us, give us sustenance, we're starving. So when this new episode popped up, it was manna from heaven, and I know John will understand that because he is so well-versed in the good book. That's right. I thought it was more of a catfish myself, but we'll probably get to that here in a second. I'm way better as a guest, by the way. You put me host and I'm not very good, but you put me to the side. I'm doing an excellent job so far. I just want to put myself over. By the way, have you seen the shirt? Oh, I like it. It's the little things. It's the little creative control logo on your shirt that that made it for me. Plus it goes with my hat. Very nice. And then he goes on and admits on his show that he did this to fucking get my go is to troll me. Uh So, what is that? What was that? Get my go. Get my go. What does that mean? And then he goes on and admits on his show that he did this to get, fucking get my go is to troll me oh, on oh, a, oh, a thing about oh, politics. And it- wait a minute. What was that? <laughs> hey, what was that? Get, get, my, go. get my go. Got him. Now, listen here. Listen here. This is a man that um, we just heard him say on another show that he had a master's degree he claims to write for various wrestling websites and Major. writes articles. Now, this is a guy that he, he just said, get my go. Now, the phrase everyone knows, it's get my goat. Okay. My goat. Now, he said this on this episode. Now, on the next episode we're going to listen to, the one with uh, Jeff Maxson, he yeah. says it twice. Ugh. He says, get my go. Well, we don't know, Mike. I mean, I'm from the Philadelphia area. You're from Chicago. Jeff is some redneck from hey, Billy Plummer from West Virginia. Billy Plummer from West Virginia. So perhaps this is some sort of Binghamton, New York slogan that we're not aware of. Yeah. I, I just want to say before we start playing that I knew that I always knew that this wasn't going to be quite what John wanted, but I knew he was in trouble. There was hints and hints and hints and more things that would go wrong. But once he turned Jeff against him, I was like, this guy's been a supporter, man. Like once you start taking your few hardcore supporters that listen to every piece of shit you're putting out and you turn them against you and you block them and then you immediately start insulting them, it's, it's a bad look. And I knew once he turned Jeff against him, I was like, man, it's, it's going down now. It's going down the slope. So first off, you were, you were jumping through a little bit there, but he did mention twice that Rob's version of their split that he originally put out, not his new one <clears throat> with his confessions and whatnot, but his first one with him and Richie that went over the split and everything that happened. And he goes, that was taken down, rightfully so. Well, I don't think that Spreaker went through these shows on their own and, and tried to find vile content and all. So, John, how did their show get taken down? What kind of a, a, a see-me-face-to-face man are you 
when you're sending emails to providers going, they're being mean to me, <laughs> man. And fucking, you know, when your whole persona, Johnny Podcast, and has been based on talking shit and burying people and trying to, you know, make up stories and videos and all this. And now going after sponsors and sending video or sending emails to, to their podcast provider that Rob had just jumped to and probably didn't have as solid a base as say we do, or I kind of, where I kind of said, look, we'll take them down, but you got to tell me what's wrong with them. And then in, in a discussion, we decided we're not taking them down. Now these go to YouTube now. Cause I don't want to, um, I just don't want to cause our speaker contacts any trouble, but I just want to make that clear. Even though it was long winded, John is a little, bitch snitch who tries to say no one wants to face me and then does all this shit behind closed doors and a, dude every time like he's sitting there tweeting i'm getting tagged i'm getting shown screenshots of stuff about me i didn't block the dude yeah i didn't block him i'm waiting i'm here i'm ready i can defend myself all's good everything he does is behind the scenes he's going to talk what he talks on his show he's going to try to get people on his side he's going to go behind you and he's going to try to stab you in the back that's exactly what i watched happen with Rob. Richie said it was Rob. I don't know who it was. I really don't give a shit. Each of them was trying to sell the other one out, saying it was the other one. Whatever. Whoever did it, whatever. You did it. It got taken down, rightfully so. I'm glad it did because it was defamation of character. And it was bullshit that wasn't proven. And it was wrong. So on top of what two plus hour long show, then they go on Mike Durbin show. Now, Mike Durbin here, this guy. Woof. I ain't here to rag on people all day and I'll tell you why at the end, but this guy, man, what a fucking piece of work this dude is. Maybe, you know, Mike from the brand, maybe, you know, him from his show. Mike's a talented videographer. He does some cool stuff. I always liked Mike. Mike became very, I think, influenced by Husey and, and Feeney over time. Now, first he puts me over, he puts over my video editing skills uh, and then at the end of the episode, he kind of rips on my YouTube page. Like yeah. the only thing of interest on there is the clips about him, which aren't anywhere near your top viewed clips, as he said. Yeah. I would just like to say that uh, earlier today, uh, in a previous episode, if you will, we listened to John for every chance he got talk about what a great guy Mike is. <laughs> I'll do whatever Mike asks. Uh, he's a, he's a great guy. I'll never have a problem with Mike. Stop trying to start trouble. There's no trouble there. And we've already covered this, but I always find it funny that between him and Chris Martin, it's always me and Husey that have, you know, converted Mike to the dark side. And I, yeah. I, to me, what the fuck, man? That really, that gives you no credit at all. And I don't see you as an easily led guy, but that's just the way, I don't know. I ended up locking him. He got mad. We actually talked about it, thought we ironed it out. And Rob makes a post that everything was fine with us. And then the next day, Mike sends me an email. says, hey, can you give me a call? I give him a call. Mike's friends, get, you know, Feeney and Husey were mad. He said about it that, you know, he made up with us and that they mentioned it or that Robin mentioned it. And that if we could not mention it because he doesn't want to create any tension between them or whatever, completely a silliness that your so-called friends would be mad at you because you were a man and stepped up and, and squashed something with somebody. <clears throat> but <laughs> so it's silliness. First off, Mike knows exactly why I was, was, aggravated at that and it, it lasted for like a day and then sh i don't i can't remember if it was was it after he put the video out which video the 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 diehard video yeah this is after oh yeah yeah so i was especially pissed because it was like how can you open up a line of communication with this guy that's trying to fuck all of us you know yeah and uh but it was it was over very quickly and i i, I was angry for like an, an hour you know and then it was over but um for john to say like how can you get mad at someone for blah, when all he does is when someone immediately likes a post of mine or retweets it or Mike's or Husey's or whatever, they're blocked. Jeff is an example of that. As soon as Jeff started liking posts on our side of the fence or retweeting stuff or interjecting, John blocked him and proceeded to, you know, insult him on Twitter and on his shows. So, and this was a guy who had supported him for months. Yeah, no, and it was kind of, it kind of sucked at the beginning, but you know, just kind of seeing what other people went through, I wasn't I wasn't surprised at all, man. It's just it's it's so thinly veiled what he's trying to do. You know, he's going to say something nice about somebody. He's going to put a dig at your friend. He's just trying to drive a wedge between everybody he can. He yeah. can't get himself over, so he's going to try to bring other people down with him. It's as simple as that. It's plain to see. Yeah. Whatever. I oblige. Don't say anything. Mike's trashing Chris Martin all the time over and over saying awful, hateful things, whatever, you know, and then it blows up again. And 
Mike invites him on his show, Richie and Rob, to go trash on me for the better part of an hour and a half or something again. Let's get that straight, John. I didn't invite them on my show. Rob messaged Joe and asked if Rob and Richie could go on any Creative Control Network show. Mm-hmm. We just gave so, them the forum. Yeah, we gave them the forum. You know, Husey's episodes, Husey's always got tons of episodes in the can. Uh, he's not going to make room you know, for something like this. Joe's show is is not really based in, in that, this kind of stuff, but my show is like an open canvas. You know, it's very fluid. It's not gender fluid, but it's very fluid. I'll let anybody come on and, and air their grievances. Yeah. So sure, I'll have Richie and Rob on, no problem. So believe me, John, I did not invite them on. They wanted to come on. I had them on, no problem. Yeah, man, it was a hateful, awful, disgraceful, disgusting fucking show made up of hateful and disgusting and disgraceful people and things it was hilarious it was very truthful there was no slander it was all true you just didn't like the truth john yeah so when he doesn't like the truth it's it's hateful it's it's disgusting it's disgraceful it's trolling it was trolling but what's more disgusting disgraceful or hateful than the things that john said about vince russo earlier today when you're listening to that or jeff lane or me or Husey? How come that or Mike now? Because now he's really shitting on you and coming at you. How is that not disgraceful and hateful? It's only disgraceful and hateful when it's coming at him. You know, he's he's just ugh. once again, I'll refresh to say that Richie and I are totally once again, I'll refresh to say that could be a Bing Binghamton dialect. I don't know. Cool and over it. We've talked about it. It's done. Water under the bridge, no hard feelings. None of this is directed at Richie Reardon in any way, shape or form. I hope Richie does great things and does awesome stuff. So you want will. to put that out there once again, just so you know, Richie and anybody doesn't try to mince my words here <laughs> now. Ugh. And B Richie will do great. You know why? Cause he got the fuck away from you on and on start saying the whole lying and of numbers and fakes and whatever this horse shit is again, just completely bullshit things. It's not bullshit. It was proven proven. It's not bullshit. Why can't he just admit it? He got close on that one show where he admitted, I wanted to get too big too fast. So that's what that meant. But he never actually says, I cheated. I was trying. And, and since I had fake numbers, my name is now mud with any sponsor, you know, because they're all through the same agencies. You know, they all know what's going on. Once you fuck a sponsor out of something and say you got 20,000 downloads and you have 200, it's not going to turn out well. And that's why these shows now his excuses, we're going to do it the right way and for fun and blah, blah, blah. And there's never any fucking sponsors because they fucked up with Manscaped. They fucked up with my bookie and they fucked up with Blue Chew through me. And I think that's it, you know? So that's it, dude. You fucked up. And, and now you're stupid enough to continue to keep the same name. That name is fucking horrible. You need to put a mask on, you know? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the grapplers would take you, but that's your only hope is to hide your face and try to change your goddamn voice. We saw your YouTube subscriptions grow in one day. Yeah. We watched it all day. It started, you know, you were hovering around 50 for a few weeks. And then in one day, it went from 50, 100, 300, 500, 1,000. Yeah. We watched it get, get up to almost 2,500 subscriptions in one afternoon. And then it, it kept going up and down and it settled around 2,000, you know. Yeah, and all these not possible, man. All these hardcore followers and subscribers that never comment or engage or share <laughs> links or anything. Yeah. You ask uh, if you ask IAC, you know, we're uh we're here struggling for 16 clicks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's nothing but a, a shit star purposely. I don't even think he has a foot in the in any sides of the race. He don't give a shit. He just wants no. people to argue. No. So, I got I got no problem with IAC. Whatever. They go on to sit over there over the course of an hour and a half and make fun of guys with disabilities like Chris Martin. Oh, what disability does he have? If I were Pastor Chris, I would be very insulted that you said I have a disability when I don't. If I had the clip ready, I would play it for you right now that, that Mr. Uh, Master's Degree Counselor, human uh, you know, depression and anxiety advocate, you know, comes out against me and publicly goes, this guy's bipolar. This guy has mental problems, blah, 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 which I had never said publicly. So this is why you can't trust this guy with anything. I never said it to him either. I just mentioned when we talked back in the day about, you know, feeling a little overworked, feeling a little depressed and stuff. So he put it out there and mocked 
right? And took yeah. shots at guys, right? We can't take shots at Chris for having a wonky back injury, but he's allowed to take shots at me all he wants for what could be, you know, depression issues. You're kind of a hypocrite, John. Yeah, I just, I just, I've never been able to do any, any of Chris projects, man. Even when I was, you know, talking to John, trying to be friendly, trying to put their shows over, I, I just couldn't get into it. There, there was nothing there for me, man. Yeah. Nothing. Rob's making fun of Chris's stutter. They're calling Chris a crook and faking his neck injury, lying about it, whatever. Just awful shit. I thought he had a back injury. They're calling a back injury? Back injury, neck injury, which yeah, one? You know what? Chris Martin himself even switches back and forth between back, neck, or sometimes it's spine. Spinal. He can never, yeah, spinal. He can it's never spinal. figure out which one it was. Other people I know, Kip from fucking... Um, <laughs> What's that movie? Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, you know, yeah. just hateful, mean shit once again. No, that's a fact too. Your friend Jeff Miller sounds exactly like Kip from Napoleon Dynamite. Exactly. I'm not making fun of him. That's the fact. He sounds like Kip. You know, Rob's joining in on it at will, you know, over and over with Durband and Husey and fucking uh, Feeney. They're just having a good old time doing it. Great. God damn right we were. Oh my God. It's Great. such a good time. It's what a, what a tremendous Saturday that was. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's back to Rob already. He'll, he'll switch back to him a few more times too. Yeah. Just hateful bullshit. And then they want to bring up a topic. I've been open and honest and I've been sober for nearly six years. I was hurt while I was in the military. I was hurt for many, many years. My whole neck is destroyed. I need my, I need massive neck surgery over the next several years in my neck. I've had freaking three, four knee surgeries on one knee, three on one knee alone. Soon to be a fourth and a fifth over the next two years due to my injuries hey, when that, I was in the military. Stop real quick. Just stop that real quick. <laughs> I had three, four on one knee. Well, three for sure with a fourth coming. Maybe four. Yeah, and then maybe a fifth. Uh-huh. And B, when the show that we listened to earlier with Russo, he said that it was his ankle that he broke that led to a knee surgery, which is some fucking Tom Foolery anyway. Got addicted to painkillers when I was in in finishing my career because of the pain that I was in. I've talked about it a million times on this show and other things. I don't care that I've discussed that about that part. Now, here's these guys on the show are sitting over there saying, I'm actively using drugs or insinuating it. No, Husey asked Rob, does yeah. he think John Wanglin uses drugs. Yeah. And, and that's Rob gave the answer. Yeah. And there was another person who privately asked Rob that because there were suspicious facial tics and sweating and talking. And you know what else is a, is a, a symptom of drug addiction is fracturing personal relationships on a regular basis, dude. No, so, you know, people have come to me and said that they think I have, you know, I can't confirm it, but I looked and saw the things too. And insinuating these guys are and talking about that I'm a drug addict still. I'm using drugs like I'm a meth head. No, <laughs> no one mentioned meth at all. No one ever said meth. And here's the thing. When you're a person who has either experienced addiction yourself or has experienced addiction for someone in your life or your personal life or your family or your friends, you know exactly what it looks like and sounds like. So your behaviors, certain behaviors on video and, and acting the way acting out the way you do on Twitter and starting fights and stuff led people to question because you're the one that's acting funny and strange or whatever. People that have that experience in their own personal life or with people that they know, know how people act, know the facial tics, know the, the fucking grind in the teeth and the jaw and all that. So you, you recognize it. That's why there's, there's people in big companies that are there specifically to keep an eye on the, on the employees. And if you have a, a suspicion about someone, you go to them and they can recognize it for, by sight. And then they see it and they drug test you or whatever. So it's just a matter of people recognizing patterns and behaviors, dude. You were acting off and people saw it. So that's all there is to it. That was enough for me. I fought six years of my life to get my life back. And I have got my life back. I'm highly successful in all things that I do. No, (laughs) you might be successful in everything else, but you are not successful in your attempt at podcasting and starting a network and try and, and trying to make money off that and make it your full-time living, which is what you wanted to do. So you're not successful at everything, let alone the suspicions about other things that you claim, but you're definitely not successful in the podcasting realm. I'm very set in life. I'm very lucky on that. I've worked very hard for it. I have a great job. My wife has a great job. I own multiple homes. 
I'd like to say I'm a very successful guy and I'm very blessed and honored and I work very hard for those things. And I work very hard to get my life back. So for people to go on there who knew that I'm not, that I don't do that shit and I haven't done that shit is a fucking low blow. And it was wrong and it was sickening to see that people were doing that. They also tried to humiliate my dad, make fun of him. No, we weren't making fun of your dad. We were making fun of you Dude. for proclaiming that Stan Wangland is number 13 in Brazil. We're not making fun of him. No, just you, buddy. My family. Now, mind you, this whole time, I've never said anything. Yeah. Not a damn thing. Not one thing. Not publicly. Not on social media. Not on a show. Said nothing. It's the first time I've even talked about it. This has been going on for over a month with these yokels. 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 I don't, I don't know who that is. Uh, dude, who has talked about his family? I, I have not seen anybody say one thing about his wife, about his kids, nothing like that. He's, he can't, you can't deflect it from you onto them. Nobody's talking about them, man. Yeah, no one's no even one. made fun of his girlfriend. No. <laughs> Doing this stuff. Never said one thing. Now, I left Mr. Durband a very scathing message. I fully admit I did. I would do it again tomorrow. Because in my world, when somebody does something wrong to you, you call them out on it. And you talk to them like a man. Oh, come on. I knew he wouldn't pick up the phone because I know he's a sack of shit. John, you called me at dinner time. Restaurants had just opened up here in Illinois that week. I was out for dinner with my friends. You call me. I see the name John Wangle on my phone. Ugh. You think I'm going to excuse myself and go answer your call? Come on, and man. Here's the thing. Like that, even you don't even have to say, I, I, I was at the dinner with people. I was doing this. I was doing that. That's fine. And that's what happened. But the reality is also the fact that nobody wants to talk to this guy. Yeah. And all he ever says on social media and in his, on his show or whatever is, why don't you call me? Why don't you call me? Let's do a face-to-face -face on Skype. No, it's like desperation reaching out for anyone, someone to connect with this poor son of a bitch. But guess what? Nobody wants to, dude, because you're fucking unpleasant as fuck. Nobody wants to talk to you. That's it. Well, he literally just got done saying he didn't say nothing to anybody, but then he immediately says, so I left Durbin a message. Okay, you didn't say anything. But you, then you just said you did. Two seconds later. Mm -hmm. And I know he's a chicken. <laughs> Does he think I'm uh, M Marty McFly? Like I'm going to go crazy when oh, you call Nobody me a chicken. calls him chicken. <laughs> What's wrong, McFly? Chicken? John, anytime you want to leave me a voicemail like that again, please do. Uh, it, it's, it's hilarious. Thank you. Thank you for that. So I knew he wouldn't pick up the phone. And I left him that message intentionally. That's not being crazy. That's not being. Do I have to put the message on this goddamn show? Yeah, play it again. Why not? I mean, god damn, it's that's not crazy. You sound like a psychotic madman. Not yeah. as bad as the one you left, Rob. But I mean, no. if you play, dude, everybody wanted to know when I played them this message. Who the fuck is that guy? What's wrong with him? <laughs> These Ooh, are people that, that, that don't know you. They don't know who you are. Only one of them knew who you were. They're all. They all think you're an insane madman. Yep, psycho. You want to say the things you do and create hateful things. And this guy's gone on to, to put out 10 more videos and shows about me, making fun of me, making fun of others, doing all the same nasty shit that he's done. I, I put out 10 videos. No, from one show, I put out maybe six or seven clips, all from the same show. Dude, every show you could just cut up and dissect. Every yeah. day you could parody everything. So, you, there's so you, much you keep material. giving us manna from the heavens, like Joe said. It's sad and it's pathetic, man, <laughs> to be honest with you. That someone's life is so boring or unfulfilled that you have to make multiple videos over and over and over again to try to get fucking views and clicks and attention. First of all, my YouTube's not monetized, so getting views doesn't do anything for me. The only thing it does is it gets the word out about what a fucking jackass you are. Yeah. This is fun. It's fun for people to hear the shows. It's fun for us to create them. It's fun for me to edit. And John, you put over my video editing skills. You're right. I'm fucking great, man. Yeah. I am an excellent video editor. And for me to edit a video, to put it out for people to enjoy, it doesn't take me long at all. You're the guy that, you're the guy that admitted that you stayed up till 4 a.m. editing podcasts for, for months. Yeah, and they sound like shit. 
But here's yeah. another thing. Not only do people enjoy this, despite what IAC might think or, or, or pretend to think, uh, but we have Jeff on right now. We had Jeff Erstad on on another show. We've had Husey will be back, you know. Not only that, but guess what, dude? There's a line. There's a line of people. We have the next four weeks <laughs> with guests that want to come on and are dying to come on to join into this, dude. So by all means, keep releasing shows. And even if you don't, we can still mine all the shit you used to talk because I've got it. Or to try to think you're being cool or whatever it is and pander to your fucking dopes that follow you. you know? I am pandering to the dopes that follow oh, me. Yes, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Everybody's having a great laugh at your expense, John. Yep. Yeah, you got it. You got people pushing the thumbs up. You got people pushing the thumbs down. But bottom line is you got people pushing buttons and you're not paying them a single cent. Yeah. Yep. There you go. The 10 or 15 people there that don't like me or want to join in and be like you because they're a bunch of fucking geeks. If you want to hear geeks, you're going to listen to the next clip, the next uh, excerpt from a show that we play. <laughs> if you want to hear some fucking geeks talking. And this guy I knew would never pick up the phone. So he doesn't. Whatever. Hey, I left you a message, Mikey boy, and I meant everything I said. Take that, Mikey boy. And I left Rob a message, too. And I reminded Rob of one thing is that I never once fucking said anything of what Rob told me, something that I did not like about him, something that made me really not want to do business with him and made him even more unlikable to me. No, like, okay. That is just so freak. I, I don't mean to go 2020 here. That is so freaking abusive. Let me call you and remind you what this really is. Oh, hell no. Ah, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going down the snowflake route, man, but God dang, let me call you and tell you what's up. No, that, that ain't, that ain't how it goes. And it's not accurate because he took uh, something personal that Rob told him about a mistake that he made and, and paid for and all that stuff. But he was supposed to keep it private. They're business partners. And he told Richie about it. And he told someone else about it that I know of. That's kind of on the, on the outskirts of all this. That's just a listener. What I, they brought it up to me. Like, I already knew about that. I'm like, John told you. They're like, yeah, I knew about that for months. All right, so we had an audio problem. I must admit, it was probably my fault. I must have forgotten to hit record when we stopped the last session and started a new one. So we're going to switch out uh, tag team partners here. Jeff and Joe are out. I've gone for the hot tag, and I've tagged in the great. Husey. Uh, a little apologies up front. I'm, I'm dealing with what I hope is a uh, hay fever and not uh, COVID or AIDS. So I've got a hot tea and a hot water beside me. So if you hear me coughing and stuff, well, deal with it there, man. So we're going to continue right where we left off on this tremendous recording. This is John's AEW Fight for the Fallen and WWE Extreme Rules 2020 preview and predictions. He's already talking about that, but now he's talking about us. So we're going to continue on right where we left off with Husey. Are you ready, Husey? Never been more monumentally excited. Rob created, or not created, but Rob had a sexual history for sexual infractions against him. And he talked about it on his show this week. Which John was so offended by that he continued to do a show <laughs> with until Rob mentioned the political opinion that Wangland didn't agree with. Only then did uh, Wangling have a problem with Rob's past. Yeah, not only did he continue doing shows with them, but he actually at some point made him a partner. Like they they bought into it together. They were both equal partners in the Reality Check podcast network. So, yeah. Yeah, and and that that just that's just one of the things about this uh, woke saint that uh, wanging this is that uh, nobody's I don't think there's anybody who's like, "Oh, well that's not a bit weird the Rob thing." Uh, even Rob himself would say that and admit to it that it's that it was a dark time in his life. But uh, don't then decide when to become offended by it. You're either offended by it or you're not. So I'm not mentioning something that he hasn't mentioned. Rob told me about it. And it's something that I highly stand very firmly in life against, against people who have sex crimes. Well, no, you don't, because you continuously did a fucking show with him. And plus, I think you were jealous of the woman. I think that he's like, hey there, man. Somebody whipped it out, and I didn't get to take a peek there, man. Free Whether sausages. it's a child molester, a rapist, sexual type acts of lewdness. Right. Now, that's, what Rob did was weird, okay, and kind of gross. Uh, 
What, what, what would, who would you rather have lunch with? Someone who flashed a woman or a guy who raped a kid? Uh, the former. Huh? The flasher. I don't speak no French. <laughs> the flasher. Yeah, uh, I, I see. This is a typical fucked up, dumb, wingling fucking logic. To link in a really dumb thing that Rob did with a fucking uh, rapist. Like, it's like, no, it's not the same there, man things that make me sick and they're things that I choose to not work with in my career field of that demographic because I know that I will never be biased and I won't be able to give them the best services. It's just me. And I make that decision because it's something I feel vehemently against and it makes me sick. Now, Rob told me. No, John, uh, there's a part for him saying this. There's then also hundreds and hundreds of episodes of John doing shows and get along great with this guy that he's decided to have a problem with there, man. It's disgusting there, man. But if he wants to talk about extreme rules, he'll be a guest on the show anytime there, man. Arsehole. And yes, I did mention it to Richie once because I was disgusted by it and Richie was already just disgusted by Rob. So yeah, I did mention it in confidence once. It was never brought out publicly in any way, shape or form. See what he's doing there. He's now speaking for Richie, who uh, I don't, who isn't to, there to confirm or deny <clears throat> anything that's going on. He's like saying, and Richie's also disgusted by him there, man. Not that I want to stir anything up, of course, but he says he's going to go around and shoot him in the dick there, man. It's, he's a wanker. You're such a John Wanklin. That's what you are. Dickhead. And it did make me sick, and it did make me think differently of him. But I tried to overlook it as best I could, even though it wasn't against something. Now, Rob admitted on the show what he did was that he saw a neighbor. I mean, this is just fucking weird. But he saw his neighbor and decided to open the window for several minutes and flash them and pleasure himself from what it sounded like. And, you know, spank his fucking uh, monkey there, you know, take the fucking, you know, old grunt, take, take, play his freaking skin flute, whatever you want to call it there, man. Masturbate, whatever words you want to use, you know. Is it just me, or can you hear Wingling pulling on his own nipples while describing this act? It gets dirty, disgusting, bad boy there, man. Ooh, if I was there, Rad Rob would be bent right over my knee. One hand on his ass, and the other one inside his ass there, man. Not that I'm into that, of course. I'm a real man who likes pro wrestling. There, man. Fuck off. Rob said this on the show he did. He didn't do it against children. He said it was against his neighbor who was an adult. So I want to make that clear so nobody construes that as that. <laughs> so nobody construes that as that. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing. He's the, but he doesn't want people thinking that. But didn't he just kind of at the start of this link him in there with a child rapist? Yeah. yeah. Wingling, you cunt. It's not me. Now I knew this. Rob's bashed me a million times up till this point. Rob's just gone on and done all these shows, made fun of my friends, made derogatory remarks about my family. Rob only did two shows. He did his own with Richie, and then he did the one on my show. <laughs> yeah, and when did he ever bash Wanglin's family? So, see, this is, this is the thing that I always find so strange about this dumb fat fuck. He's making things up to be offended by. Yeah, and he works himself up into a frenzy. It's like these people saying all their things, there, man. It's like, yeah, but he didn't say that, and nobody's made fun of John's family. We only made fun of John talking about Stan the Man's hit podcast in Brazil, which was number thirteen, by the way. People love throwing that line out now. Like, if you look in our YouTube comments or on Twitter, everyone, <laughs> everyone loves shouting out the fact that Stan the Man was number thirteen in Brazil. Said awful things about me. Just been a complete shit stain. So I called Rob after this whole drugged out thing he did, you know, with the drugs and all that bullshit. And I left him a scathing message too. Right. There's another thing that Wangland decided to get offended by. Nobody said he's on drugs. Nobody said that. The actual clip and the footage is out there of me asking the question and Rob responds by saying that it's not the first time he's been asked. He's not saying yes. I think he even literally says, I don't think so. So uh, John is now offended by something he, that he didn't hear. Like this, this guy's a fucking nut job there, man. But I just hope that he's doing a show soon about what TV box sets he's been watching because 
that shit's exciting. I reminded him that I've never once said anything about him publicly to anybody. Publicly. And I never was going to. But if he wanted to keep it up, it would have been something I was gladly willing to discuss with people because I was sick and tired of him slandering my name because that's all he had done. Again, he did it on his show with Richie and he did it on my show. Two shows. And what exactly what good name does Wangland have to slander? <laughs> like he's he's not respected by anyone. He's the real life version of David Brent or Michael Scott from The Office. He's a joke. He's Jack Black without the laughs. Like the guy is fucking he's school of I was gonna say school of rock, but hey there, man. It sounds like something else, if you know what I'm hinting at, brother. So there you go. I did leave you a message. I did say that. I did mean that. And I did it because I'm a man and I have balls and I will say it to you. Now, in his credit, he called me back. That, that's so great of John to uh, admit to leaving a voicemail after everybody's already fucking heard it. Like, that, that's, just, that's a true hero. Like, hey there, man, I admit it. I did it, even though you've all heard it and laughed at me and fucking everyone's doing impressions of him there, man. And by the way, we're not going to stop. Like, he has hundreds and hundreds of podcast appearances. We're, we're going to keep doing this. Like, all we need is a, is a free morning. And nobody's really busy on Saturday mornings during lockdown. So it will continue. Yes. And, and, then, and the best thing is Wangland has appeared on, on quite a few other people's shows. So <laughs> Those are the best ones. His appearances on other shows are the best. <laughs> there's, I demand to be part of the Hambone appearance, you fucking psychopath. This was actually, I was actually out drinking, uh, going to see uh, the, the Food Fighters that night. And I had to take the time to go message Wangland because he came across so insane in it that i had to dm him say you sound like a fucking nut job there man <laughs> called me back we had some heated moments at the end of it though we agreed there were some mistakes made by both parties and we agreed to not slander one another not be involved in that stuff and to move on and maybe in the future who knows you know friendship is more important than things let's try to rebuild some things he even sent me a message the next day saying that I'm, you know, the better man than he was, you know, and for forgiving him and thank you and how awful it was and to apologize to my wife and my parents for it. You know, so for somebody. Right. John can say that, but can he prove it? Like, is he just, is he just saying, so basically Red Rob apologized to me and he talked about how great I am and how my haircut isn't fucking stupid there, man. And then Red Rob went on to say there, man, that my beard looks real and natural and my eyebrows are wicked. That's the way it is there, man. And hey, he's a good guy. I don't want to put words in his mouth there, man. <laughs> Whatever. He took the fucking piss out of you just like everybody else does. To do that and say that to me, I respect that. I relate it to those people. There was no hard feelings. It was over and it was done in my book, but I was expecting that people was going to be over and done with. I made the decision to get off Twitter. I made the decision to stop doing a podcast for a while. And I did. And I didn't really know when I was going to come back. If it was going to be a week, two weeks, three weeks, three months, three years, whatever it was. It was 11 days. It wasn't even fucking three weeks. Uh, plus then he made his dumb wrestling video. Who the fuck? Oh. Well, what is up with him? Does he understand? <laughs> hey there, man. I didn't know it was going to be two weeks, two weeks, three years there, man. He he didn't get off Twitter. He went into hiding because what he had, Chris Martin, was his backup plan. And that guy, HIV, or whatever his name is. And it's like, hey, I thought, I'm done with this shit there, man. And what makes it even worse is that super smart, righteous Wangland is now back doing exactly the same stuff that he was doing before his whole stuff about spending time with family and getting away about all this shit was 11 days maybe you know, i was playing it by ear just to see and i thought we were cool shot a couple messages over that weekend it was like father's day weekend or something like that and shot a couple messages back and forth and I thought everything was cool and people start sending me screenshots because I'm not on Twitter anymore. <laughs> I'm not on Twitter anymore. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, weird thing is, then, if you noticed this, the, the day that Wangling closed his account, I started getting uh, completely brand new followers who created their account on the same day. Yeah. And they had an egg profile picture and, and they followed people such as Mike Durband and Joe Feeney and Rad Rob. And, and I just thought, hmm, what are the chances there, man? Beating out there and saying snide ass things about me and about the show going away from the wonderful fan club of 10, 15 of these dopes online. Now that's wrong. Right now, there's almost 200 views on our last video. So if he thinks that this is a small club, uh, well, not even that. Let's go to the fact that he thinks it's a club. It's like, no, it's what, 30 minutes during the day to have a laugh at the expense of someone that we mutually don't like it's like watching the office it's safe to say that more people have heard his shows when they're cut up and put onto our youtube shows than actually listen to his podcasts on his feed and here i'm thinking to myself what the fuck man you know you say you're going to be nice and civil but you just can't help yourself you're just going to continue on and here i'm going to be the nice guy and do this and then he gets in a beef with Sonny because of polyester that other shit stain over there well, I'm not even getting into that. That's a whole long story. He ends up messaging me, trying to get into it with me there to get him stopped again with Sonny or whatever it is. I send the messages he sends me to Sonny. He doesn't like it because he said something mean about her. Whatever. Get the fuck over yourself. Don't say it if you can't, you know, hack it. Whatever. You said you couldn't contact her. I sent her the messages. Tried to relay it for you. Get me out of this. I am not involved here, man. I'm freaking sitting with my family and friends relaxing in my pool and having a barbecue and I'm being annoyed with this shit when I'm not even podcasting anymore. Keep that drama for whatever. And then I just continued. Did, did he just say, so if John said that he sent her the screenshots and then he said, whatever, I'm not in this, man. It's like, but you started it. Yeah. So how are you not in it? He fucking, he's such a dumb shit. So here's the thing about him. If he knew how to edit, he would listen back to his episodes and go, well, maybe I shouldn't uh, leave that sentence in because it completely contradicts what I say in a minute, maybe two yeah. minutes, maybe three minutes, maybe the next episode, maybe a show I do next week, maybe a show I do on another podcast. I just don't know there, man. Digs and tweets that he makes online and things that he said. So I made a couple of cute little videos, little funny videos there with some, you know, messages to him and Hughes and Feeney and Durban and all those guys and just other little things that were in there. Yeah, those were the videos where um, in his response to me calling him wrestling obsessed, he then responded by using a wrestling character to take a dig at me. So it, by taking a shot at me, he proved me right. So thank you, Wangland, you fucking idiot. He doesn't like it. Sends me a message about the one thing I put with a flasher in there. Doesn't like it. You're not going to hold it over me. You know, you're not going to do that. I said, well, you know, you said that you were going to stop. So you haven't wanted to stop. So what's up, man? You know, basically that's the gist of it. Dude, I haven't said one thing and you keep going. Okay, so uh, it's bad for Rod Rob to mention what Wangling did in the past with the drug stuff. But this is perfectly fine because you retweeted someone's podcast there, man. Yeah. Therefore, I'm going to bring up your criminal past there, man. Like that, This is the fucking uh, the, the, the logic of this guy who has this brand of one feed, which is soon to have one show because definitely got one listener. Stop, I stop. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm not going to continue anything else. You stop, I stop, man. Oh, you're not going to hold it over me and blah, 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 blah about my past. You're not going to do that. I wasn't convicted of anything. Well, what are you so nervous about then? You're not going to hold it over me. Okay, sure. I'm not going to say shit. I'm going to keep it quiet unless you just do what you're supposed to do and stop. I'm not going to say anything. But you keep going on and on. Okay, fine. That's what I get. Fine, John. Cool. We're done. It's over. Never once did I say anything or release another cryptic video or whatever people want to say, you know, about it. Never once did I. It was done. Because cryptic is stuff that makes you think. His videos were blatantly like a Philly cheese stick because apparently, uh, well, Joe Feeney does have quite a meaty center. We, we, we can all agree on that. Uh, cryptic my balls. 
So then somebody tells me to go listen to this fucking dope show this last weekend. I said, go listen to this shit. Okay, I listened to it. Okay. Who the fuck are these people that speak to him? Like, so um, I'm at the gym there, man, right? You know, lifting about five million uh, pounds with one arm. You know how it is there, man. I'm uh, re- rejecting interview requests and stuff because I'm very busy there, man. Tom Cruise walks up to me there, man, and he says, excuse me, Mr. Wangland. And I went, yeah, what do you want? And he goes, hey, I, I don't know if you've heard this dope podcast there, man, but they're talking about you. Like, no, somebody didn't tell you to listen to it. You woke up specifically and sat there alone on the toilet and listened to this whole thing from beginning to end you needed to hear it you're obsessed with podcasting you're jealous of everybody else's success around you people are making money people are making contacts and friends but what are you doing you're fucking uh, you you're going on effing for real and you're pitching them this idea on the air that's so shit that they immediately get in touch with joe finney and they're saying, this guy's a fucking idiot. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. This sounds terrible. Can we come back? So Joe's like, uh, this, this dope, this fucking cunt. Here is this guy sitting over there and saying that he's like the victim here. And I heard his dog passed away. And I, I want to say, first off, I know what it's like to lose a dog. And I'm sorry that you lost Bella. I know you loved her a lot. So I want to say that right off the bat, you know. So he's, he's already emotional because he's lost his dog. You know, and then he goes on this show and starts talking about bullies and claims that I'm the bully. He's taking the power back is what he keeps saying. Give me a fucking break, dude. I'm the bully. I'm a liar, a manipulator. I was holding it over him. And then he told his whole story about, you know, what he did. Great, Rob. I'm glad you told the world, you know, your story about your, you know, sexual lewd activity that you did. Yeah, well, well, he did take it back because clearly you were planning to come on your show to break the news about Rob's past. So he did uh, do exactly what you're saying he didn't, you fucking dumb shithead. Uh, to me, this is just Wangden making himself sound worse. You know, glad you did, man. Glad you told me you were fucking flogging your dolphin out there in the window. Cool, dude. <laughs> flogging your dolphin? I've never heard that before. Does Wagland call his dick his dolphin? <laughs> hey there, man. I was, I was on, on Google last night and I accidentally looked up a picture, a bunch of pictures of dolphins there, man. Great stuff. Did you ever, did you ever think about sitting on one the sides of a goddamn cucumber there, man? Dolphins. <laughs> you know, woo, big, you know, woo. You're you're an empowering guy, man. You told your backstory on freaking sp- spanking it to some innocent person. Can you rewind that? It sounded like he spoke about Rod Rob's dolphin, and then he came. <laughs> He's flogging your dolphin, you know, glad there, you man. Did, man. Ooh, ooh. You know, glad you did, man. Glad you told me you're fucking flogging your dolphin out there in the window. Cool, dude. Whatever. Woo. Big. You know. Woo. You're you're an empowering guy, man. You told your backstory on freaking. Sp- spanking it to some innocent person whatever you said it you told your story and he said i'm the bully i'm a broken man i'm the bully i'm the manipulator and you're not gonna take it you're gonna take the power back the broken man with the simple man with the injured man what he's not saying is how rob was wrong like rob came out and basically yeah, admitted to all this dumb shit, went very open about it, because, and, then, and now Wangden's pissed off because he's got nothing left to fucking uh, insult him over, and this isn't stopping. Like, Rob will, like, well, once I do one of my next roundtables, I'm getting Rob on, and we're really going to fucking give Wangden the, a hard time there, man. Yeah. Woo, dolphins. How the fuck am I the bully when you sat over there and did all those shows, made all those comments... Trashed on my fucking father, a joke out of my drug history and my past and trying to humiliate me, did hours of shows with these other dopes and yourself. Hang on, he's so off drugs that he starts calling us dopes? <laughs> Go flog your dolphin. Trying to disparage my name, disparage my show, disparage me at everything. You go up to everybody that we stopped working with because half of them you didn't like either and didn't want to be around them like Dean. We don't need to despise your show. He does it himself every time he releases one. Hey there, we've got the simple man on. So what's your favorite episode of Friends there, man? 
you ever see the one where Julie sucked Chandler's dolphin? Or, oh, sorry, that's the one I wrote there, man. Couldn't even stand him anymore. And we found out certain things there that we found out. But then you did exactly what a bitch does, where you went over there and pandered to them to try to get allies. You know, oh, I'm going to hit them up first. I need my backup here. They're my buddies now. I'm going to be buddies with Joe and Mike. And they're all my new friends. Oh, OK, sure. Want to pander to the one goofball that we blocked who was a complete fucking troll and ignorant freaking hillbilly out there in West Virginia there that you punished dope. That's something else I wanted to bring up. Uh, didn't they used to, didn't Wangdon used to make fun of your punish because of his job? Yeah. Uh, right. he, ma- he made it, called him a janitor or a plumber or something like that. Right, right. So Christian minister, you know, psychological fucking dolphin catching, uh, <laughs> uh, Wangland is now making fun of someone for actually earning a living. Yeah. Like, th- this is how woke and realistic he is there, man. What Wangling is such a dickhead. Like, what the fuck is up with this guy? Dolphin flood. You want it, you're going to take the power back, and, you know, you're going to get all these people and tell them about the evil John Wangland. Oh, my God. Give me a fucking break. I've not said one negative thing about any of you dopes. But, actually, he didn't say anything about you that people weren't already already thinking. So you can go play the victim and try to make it out like Wangland fucking set you up. Or sorry, that Rod Rob set you up, but he didn't. All he did was echo what we'd already... We were going to fucking bury Wangland that episode anyway. It just so happened that Rod Rob and Richie came on it. Yeah. I, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about there, man. I haven't said one fucking thing at all. Haven't said one thing publicly till now. Haven't discussed you guys in any way, shape, or form with anybody. I haven't trashed you on a show. I haven't said anything mean about any of you guys. Because nobody wants him on their show. Because <laughs> he's a fucking boring person. Nobody wants to talk to Wangland. That's why he's got 97 fucking shows. So that he's like, I'm too busy there, man. Uh, like, uh, uh, why would you have him on your show anyway? Talk about dolphins? I heard today he wanted to come on to talk about the Miami Dolphins, but then uh, there was crossed wires, and uh, he says, hey, somebody hacked my account there, man. But I'm the bully. After you tried to humiliate me with my past and my history, made fun of my family, made erroneous comments up, all this other shit, we could go down the list, but I'm the bully because I left you a message as a man and called you out and said I never fucking ever told anybody the shit that you could have done that I could have. And you're going to continue to do this. Yeah, man, I'm really the bully. You're the victim no. here, man. Well, well, maybe the word bullies is the wrong choice of words. Uh, the, the, the fucking word that he should have used is complete fucking lunatic. A complete obsessed, nothing better to do. Sad, sad little man whose, whose whole life revolves around rambling in their fucking microphone talking about shit that he doesn't know like like i'm looking at the title of this episode here aw fight for the fallen and wwe extreme rules predictions who fucking cares what the fuck type of society are we living in that you think that that is it you're pulling a trump man because Lord knows I know how much you want to be like Uncle Donald because you're a fucking bigot like he is, man. A complete another ignoramus. A complete God. other ignoramus. You're pulling the Trump card, man. You act like a shit bag and then try to blame it that everybody else is bullying you. Dude, get a clue. There was no bullying of you. There was people that called you out for your actions, and that's what it was. And there was people that let you go and didn't do it. And you kept it up, and you kept going and going and going and going and going and going. But now you're taking the power back, man. Good job. Wonderful. These idiots between Rob, the freaking Feeney crew of guys, and some of their minions there that they got that want to be like them in the worst way and think they're cool. Literally. For probably the last month straight, have done nothing but talk about us. Me mainly. Make videos. Nobody fucking likes you. Nobody likes you, Joe. Everybody has waited for the opportunity to fucking take these shots. And it's so much fun. Yeah. Which is why it's going to happen again and again. We once joked about setting up a Patreon (laughs) to charge people to listen to the shows. And we honestly did have people who said, I'll pay. 
Yeah. Because the, oh my god, we haven't even we haven't even begun. Like we haven't even opened this up to the brand yet. Yeah. <laughs> like we we could do a fucking a Zoom meeting of a hundred people all just yelling "cunt, cunt, cunt" at the same time. And by the way, we have to do that. Try to be humiliating to people. Try to disparage people. Just all around be awful when not one thing has ever been said by me to them. Their lives are so meaningless that they spend their nights doing this stuff and talking this shit. No, you're again, you're the one who said you stayed up till four in the morning editing podcasts. We we don't stay up at night doing this. This is something we do on a Saturday morning. We have a laugh, good time, fellowship. <laughs> yeah, entertain other people, talk come up with new quotes. Flogging the dolphin is clearly going to be the name of the episode. Who the fuck said this? Is the thing about Wangdon said nobody makes him look worse than him himself. Yep. Why doesn't he ever think and say, you know what? Maybe, maybe I shouldn't talk about flogging the dolphin. You guys need to take a look in the mirror because if that's your life, that's pretty fucking sad, man. That's pretty sad. That's pretty pathetic, and it's weak. Right. The the irony here. He's saying we're pathetic and weak for doing what he's currently doing at the time. We're fucking listening to him do the exact same thing. This is what I find fascinating about him. He just doesn't get it. He doesn't understand how people can make fun of him or mock him. It's just... The sad thing is, is what he did for the 45 minutes previous to this segment. He talked about his AEW Fight for the Fallen and Extreme Rules previews. When there's not one person who cares what you think about either of those events, man, nobody. Yeah. Who did he? Who did he uh, do the show with anyway? Uh, this was a solo show, right? Now that makes it even fucking worse. <laughs> okay, you guys have nothing to do with your life, there, man. It's pathetic and sad. Oh, by the way, my money's on uh, Sunny Kiss to take the title there from Cody Rhodes, there, man. Sunny Kiss might grab a hold of his dolphin, there, man. If that's what you want to be, I'm really sorry for you. Because it's really sad. Does, is it, does he call it a dolphin because he wants him to free Willie? <laughs> hey oh. And it's really pathetic. And I don't know how anybody's life can be that meaningless and pathetic to do that all the time. Uh, this is on an episode where he previews uh, wrestling shows, <laughs> pre-taped wrestling shows. I just want to put that out there. Go ahead. <laughs> And you never want to stop. You always want to push the envelope a little further. I'm irrelevant. I'm a loser. I'm all these things that you think about me and you say, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well, here's what I'm going to throw to you. Because I haven't engaged you at all once again publicly, but a couple of little comments on Twitter, I think once to somebody, I can't remember who it was, maybe might have been one of the mass dudes or whatever, but I haven't engaged you publicly apart from a couple of comments on Twitter. It's like, I haven't engaged you publicly apart from that time you were engaged publicly by me, but I hadn't done any. So I haven't engaged you publicly, but he, what he would do is he would, he would unblock me on Twitter, comment on my thread, then block me again and do that. He did this over and over and over again in an afternoon. So, yeah. yeah that, that's the thing about this that I, I find not just that uh, if he would just plan ahead an episode instead of rambling like everybody else does like what i do when i've got an interview coming up where i want to talk about something i'll make bullet points of like like talk about the fucking the music the film the review the my latest the legal issues and shit like that (laughs) i would say and i would talk and sort of score them off as going he keeps repeating himself yeah because as he's uh born i mean recording the show He's now thinking of other stuff to talk about. So he's pretty much said the same sentence 450 times in the last uh, minute and a half there, man. And I think there's clearly something wrong with him and what's up with his eyebrows. No, I haven't really said anything to you at all, man. Never had a podcast about you. Haven't been shitting on you like you've done with me. You keep it up over and over and over again. If I'm so terrible, if I'm so bad. I'm so horrible, if I'm so exposable, if I'm so all these things, then come call me out on it publicly. Me versus you. 
What the fuck are you on, you fucking glue sniffer? Like, hey, is he challenging him to a wrestling match? It, it sounds like it, yeah. Like, hey, here's the thing. Uh, there need to be any fans there, man. So, I'm going to love you a challenge out to you right here, right now. <laughs> if I'm all these things that you say I am, and you have such a big problem with me, then the opportunity is presented to you. The opportunity has been said to several of you many times. Talk to me personally. You never would. Because we don't fucking want to. What does he need to understand? Like, what does he want me to call? Do we call him a cunt to his face? He does that himself every time he looks in the mirror. When you walk around and you look like a fucking skinhead wearing a Thunderbird's fucking hat, you're already fucking embarrassing yourself. What does he think's going on? Nobody needs to speak to him face to face. He's a nobody, we're nobody. And does he actually want us to come to wherever the fuck he lives and face to face him? Or does he mean unblock him online? I don't want to ever make up with him because of what he's done. He tried to get a shutdown. Uh, he reported tweets and all this shit because, just because he can't fucking handle facts. He's a nut job. This is the type of person that you don't want to be friends with. Yeah. Come face me. Here's a challenge there, man. Like, okay, well, what about if he came on mine and I get to control the edit? Yeah. And would he do it? I bet you he fucking wouldn't. Whatever. Tried that route a hundred times. Yeah, John, you may forget that uh, you tried that back in January. You said the same thing to me. You said, oh, be a man. Talk to me face to face. And you know what? We did. We spoke on Skype. I think it was January 30th, if I'm correct. We spoke at length and, uh, you know, the same thing. You, you wouldn't admit to buying downloads. You wouldn't admit to the click farms. You deny everything. So why would, why would I or any of us speak to you face to face when you're just going to deny everything again? The result's going to be the same. Why would we waste our time on that? Yeah, it is a waste of time. I mean, Rod Rob sent me the screenshot of uh, he had a podcast that that got something like, uh, let's just say for the sake of the story, 2,000 downloads from literally one place in New York. Yeah. Uh, and then everything else, it was, it was smaller numbers. So there's proof that there's click forms being used. And he's going to go, no way, man, that ain't me there, man. It's like, John, there's fu- there is no talking to him. Well, what can we say that has already be said? Now, we're going to test if you're really as good and as big and so overpowering with evidence as you think that you are and all these other things, man. If I'm so awful and horrible and exposable and such a piece of shit, why don't you come tell me right here on the show? You can keep the file too and use for your show and get some views. Then why would he go on your show? Why wouldn't you go on his, you dumb fuck? Also, nobody wants to hear you talk. People want to hear us make fun of you. That's the difference. I know it sure helps you. I know you've gotten some good views, Mike, over on your uh, YouTube channel. He just says that I got some good views from the, the videos, but then previously he said only 10 to 15 people like it. Yeah. Which is it? But this is, he can't make up his fucking mind and hopefully these will get bigger and bigger. Well, I will, I would like to one day when schedules line up to do a live stream on YouTube so that people can actually see how the dolphin is flogged. (laughs) Some of your biggest, you know, viewed stuff that's on there. (laughs) No, John, videos about you are not some of my highest viewed stuff on there, man. You can go look. It's not true. Yeah, there's a fucking video on there that has something like, well, over 300,000 views. That's, and, and at now, no point at the Durban ever used the word wangland. If he did, it probably would have been 5 million views because uh, Indians are, love YouTube. <laughs> That's what I got to start doing. I should, in my tags, I should tag India and Bangladesh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Putting shit up about me. Okay, whatever. I'm nobody important. I can't believe you'd waste your time with it, but whatever. You're not important. It's just really funny because you keep embarrassing yourself. And for too long, this was happening in a DM. Now we thought, let's actually get it out there because we would laugh our balls off from all these people sending us, 
here's a clip from John's fucking uh, podcast. Here's something from Fig Life. Here's something that he said on another show. And instead of just us laughing about it between us, it's like, no, let's put it out there so that new people can see this with the proof that this cunt really is a cunt. But you want some views. You want some attention. You want to talk shit. You want to prove me wrong. You want to call me out. You want to make me look dumb. You want to do all this stuff that, you know, you say that I am here. We don't want to make you look dumb. You've already done that for us. Your opportunity, man. Come on wrestling with reality. Use the file for your show. If you want unedited, uncut, nothing. You can bring a mediator. If you want to buy a source, you can do what we can do. Whatever way you want. Call me out publicly. Already have. have a conversation with me. Tell me what I am. I can't tell me what you got to say. Let's see who comes out as the victor in this one. I will. Let's see who comes out as the liar. Let's see who comes out as this, this, and this. You will. You got your crack. It's right here. You got your Fuck opportunity. You. There he goes with the drug references again. There, you got your crack. Yeah. No dope crack. Yeah. If you were female, you'd be a real heroin. Come on this show. Use it for your show. Do whatever you want with it. I don't care. Hell, you want to talk privately? We can even talk privately. We've done no. that, John. We've spoken privately. The same result. <laughs> you won't admit anything. Yeah, they're, they're bad news. You should cancel your, your disco and your Vince Russo and your Conan and the Shane Helms and, and unleash the John Wangland appearance. Yeah. Oh, yes. The, the one that the world is waiting for. Oh, I, th- I thought he fucking said that nobody was interested. Publicly would be great because then you can expose me since you know you can. Already you've been, done it. You've been exposed multiple, multiple times. There's, <laughs> you, keep, you keep exposing yourself. Every time you open your mouth, you expose yourself. So if you got an issue, if you got a problem, here's your opportunity. Call me out. Expose me like you think you can. Tell me why I'm such a piece of shit and prove to me why. And Stop repeating yourself. Come on, tell me to my face. Me versus you. That's what a man well, would do. Man up. So I'm telling you right now. So for any of those people involved, if you got that issue, Mike, Joe, Adam, Rob. She, she actually. Any of you guys, come on. Any of you guys that are involved in this, let's go. Let's talk. I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to scream at you. I'm going to fight at you. Yeah, because men don't scream. And also, you would be so cut down in seconds, you would have nothing to respond with. You don't have any wit. He fucking, I heard him the other day say that really gets my go instead of really gets my goat. So if we're leaving <laughs> off OTs, then John Wanglin's a fago. Mediator or bias source if you want. I don't care. There is no unbiased source. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's only people who can hear and see. Yeah. Apart from that, you've got a lot of supporters. You got, you got one supporter, IAC. Yeah, one hit guy. Guy. <laughs> One person, man. But come on now. Call me out. Let's see what you got. Show me how good you think you are to get me. What does that Expose even mean? Me. Well, what does that actually mean? Show me how good you are to get me? It's like, okay, well, we've all seen the screenshots the, the fact that well, well, kind of the fact that John admitted to it multiple times on a podcast of his own. Like, so what, what are we fucking denying? What are we exposing? The best part's coming up where he goes, tell me what you think of me. <laughs> like you think you can. Prove it. Tell me what you think of me. <laughs> and- I thought that was a film made a couple of years ago about uh, two men falling in love in France back in the 40s. Oh, <laughs> tell me what you think of me. It's like, okay, oh. cunt, mark, nerd, lunatic, fat, liar, cheater, uh, pussy. What else? Tell me what you think of me. It's stalker. Tell me what you think of me. Uh, jealous. There you go. Ten things. Show me... How good you think you are to get me? Expose me like you think you can. Prove it. Rip my clothes off. Tell me what you think of me. Throw water balloons at me. And give me the opportunity to respond right back to you and tell you what I think. Right. Because I'm holding back a lot here tonight. Mm. A lot of other ways I'd rather go about doing it. 
So the challenge is levied to you. It's right out there for you. Be a man and accept it. And if you don't want to accept it, that's fine. But move on then, because you've just proven that you're the phony, you're the fake, and you can't man up. And you can't sit over there and squash it and be a man. We don't want to squash anything. We we want to keep it exactly as it is. There's no squashing. There's no fun in that. It's like ACDC. When they put out the Back in Black album, it was so fucking perfect that they realized, you know what? This is gold. Let's never fucking change it. And they never did. We're ACDC, okay? This is the ACDC of podcasts. And fucking, uh, we don't want to make up with you because it's funny and you keep giving us more and more material. So it's not going to stop. And that you can't sit over there and call somebody out if you don't do it. So come on. Be a man. Come on here. Let's talk. Or even if you want to talk privately, we can do that. But I prefer that we do it publicly so you can expose me like you think you can. And then after that, it's over. It's done. We end it. No. <laughs> no. Because then we'll do a review, a review of the, the, the set and the score episode there, man. We move on. No. And if you don't accept it, that's on you. Move on then, because you have the opportunity now. Put your money where your mouth is. It's thrown right to you now. The ball is in your court. My- Put your money where the click farms are, because you have, <laughs> and you probably still do. Uh, knob head. And this is the thing. You get that wanker fucking HIV going. Where's he from again? Canada. Somewhere in Canada. Canada? Uh, he's out there going, uh, the challenge has been made and you need to accept it. It's like, no, we fucking don't. No. What fucking challenge to talk to some cunt on Skype? We don't even use Skype anymore. It's Zoom time, baby. Email is www.podcast.com at gmail.com, www.podcast.com at gmail.com. Hit me up. Let's set this up. If anyone hears that, you can use that address to send them photographs of your dolphins. Big, Call me out. strong dolphins. Put me in my place like you think you can. Expose me like you think you can. Be a man now. Stop talking shit about people behind their back. No, it's not behind your back. It's recorded and put out in public. You can fucking hear it and see it, dumb shit. And plus, uh, why does he... Have you noticed how much he repeats himself? It fucking... uh, They say the people who repeat themselves like this are either stupid or mental. (laughs) So which one is it? Because neither one's a good thing to be. Uh, This is what I... Does does he listen back to these before editing and go, yeah, I sound awesome there, man. I said great things like, tell me what you think about me. Tell me what you think of me. I don't think he edits his shows at all. I think he just, like, what he'll do is he'll sit down, he'll push play, and you'll hear the back in black instrumental version play. It's very low. It's His his shows are always very low in volume. you got to jack the volume up. Uh, so that'll play, and then he'll just start rambling on, repeating himself for an hour. That's a show for him. Done. Perfect. I'm talking shit that you don't have any idea of what you're talking about. We have proof. get to know people a little bit, get to talking, be a man and the fucking thing after that. No, but most importantly, go be a man and say it to my face, what you've said. And once again, all- publicly, you can use it for your stuff too, privately. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we can have it that way. <laughs> so I was wondering, by the way, does he want us to, you know, say it to his face and accept the challenge? But is it public? <laughs> but here's the question, though. Who's, who gets to use the file and for what show? Can you help me with that? Because I'd love to know. We're, we're not even fucking pressing re, uh, rewind on this. He <laughs> actually talks like this. He's a Fat Boy Slim song. In your court, do you accept the challenge? Or do you turtle up? And if you turtle up, move the fuck on. Because it just shows that you don't have the stones to sit over there. You don't have the balls to sit over there and face me. Turtles, dolphins, stones, grapefruits, whim wham. This guy's a fucking... I, I think he... What it happens is he repeats himself so many times that as he records on, he remembers a new word. 
which then reboots the fucking podcast and he continuously goes on. By the way, where's the new name and the new feed? Yeah, he promised that it would come within the first week or two and then it hasn't popped up yet. Oh, yeah, that's right, because all those people from his team instantly fucking quit because they thought he was a lunatic. That's enough of that. WWRpodcast.com at gmail.com. Unless you accept my challenge, you're not going to be discussed on here again. You're not going to be discussed publicly. So, accept the challenge. Be a man. Come talk as a man for any of those four guys. Let's chat. Sorry, uh, he, he's not making it clear enough yet. So, does he what, does he have a challenge for us? Because I, I must I must have missed it the last bit. But the thing is that the challenge to what do we face him? Was it over face, Skype? Face to face. Is it to be recorded? <laughs> it's one feed, and it's over Skype, or is it in person, like a man? Solo, separately, together, whatever way you want to do it. Let's chat. Let's end it. If you don't want to do it that way, last time I'm going to say it. Then you've proven. I'm, I'm willing to bet it's not the fucking last time you're going to say it, and there's three minutes left, so I'm predicting you're about to say it about seven more times. <laughs> you don't have the balls to do it, and that you Except don't have again. the stones to really sit over there and call me out properly and do it and show me what you hate about me so much and why I'm all these things. Done it. You don't done. want to do it? It's on you. Move on then, because you just proven that you don't have the balls. <laughs> it, it's like, this is real. Anyone who's watching or hearing this for the first time, this is not edited. This is actually the fucking thing he put out. He gets stuck in a loop. Are you sure he's not a robot? It's like, it is. It's a loop. He keeps, yeah, I think his, he's, his he's, brain keeps resetting itself and looping it. <laughs> Wangling this malfunctioning. <laughs> and he's, he's like, Johnny Five is a lot. You know, battery's not included. <laughs> this. But I think maybe you do got the balls. Let's see. Let's rewind I think maybe that you second. Do. Did you hear the way he said balls? <laughs> Maybe you do got the balls. <laughs> he said balls and Kim. We'll hear play that again. I think maybe you do got the balls. Let's see. I think maybe you do. I think maybe, maybe we got the balls. Maybe you do got the, the cojones to sit over there and chat. Is this fucking prince? Balls, you get stones. The balls. <laughs> balls, stones, cojones. Uh, he's going to say grapefruits because uh, Vince McMahon said that. And once again, it'll be very civil and nice www.podcast.com at gmail.com get at me let's set this up if not end it move on because if you don't accept it you're never getting a response from me here again because you can't because we're one of us is wittier smarter and quicker than you the three of us together is like fucking uh, blink 182 fighting thanos I watched Iron Man last night. It's not going to happen. Two minutes left. You haven't got one in ages, and you're not going to get one again. But I think you'll be a man enough. Haven't had a response (laughs) in ages. Did he not do one a couple of days ago? We heard it, instantly made fun of it, tore it to shreds. I think you will to come on and do it. And I think finally then... We can close this out, move the fuck on, and go about our way. Never going to be friends. Not going to happen, but I think we could be men and move along on that. I'd willing to bet money that if we did go on, he would try to uh, re-friend us there, man. I would bet money that he would do that. He's fucking dying for acceptance. That's why he uses those dumb retweet farm things or whatever they're called yeah. retweet my podcast there man doesn't mean people are listening to it you dumb shit but if you don't take it up you don't got the balls you got no right to keep talking because the opportunity has been given to you it's levied out to you publicly all right so we're going to be back later on this week f and for real's got another great show at least two i believe for you guys this yeah, week here with all- they do <laughs> on the creative control network because they fucking left your one feed there, man. One brand, one thing, an equal vote. 
and they, they're putting out a new show maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after, maybe next week, maybe in a month, maybe next year. I just don't know there, man. Mm. Jesus Christ, he's a fucking psychopath. You don't have effing for real. All you have left is inspired with Christopher and Sunny Salem. The great fights coming out. Check them out. Check out all the other great shows that are going to be coming to the feed over the next couple weeks here with Inspired and Sunny's going to be back as well. And- Woo! I was, I was wondering if that feed, how many feeds? He, you know what? In the episode after this, I don't think he mentions brand or network or feed or anything. He's, he's uh, um, He seems like a beaten man. <laughs> a beaten man with the simple man and the broken man. And the number 13 in Brazil, man. Don't forget, every Tuesday and Friday, we're going to have wrestling talk. We're going to have other reality-based stuff talk that we're going to talk about on the Wrestling with Reality portion of this feed. And we're going to have a new name over the next week or two. So you will see the feed here renamed. Nothing's changing. You don't need to do anything. You just see a new name. You're going to see a new title because we're one consolidated feed with one consolidated name. But we're still going to have our individual show names like Wrestling with Reality, Effing for Real. That's what she said, Inspired. Whatever might be on here is they're going to have their own names on their own Day that they have so <laughs> okay uh let's just go the reason why effing for real left right after that idea was pitched is because it's so fucking stupid and it means that one person can then claim the uh the downloads for all shows yeah. which means that that person can go to an advertiser and be like i get sixty thousand downloads a week that's why they left because john's idea was whether he meant it to be that way, a sneaky one. All the all their own individual, all the own individualized brands names are still there, and they're they're there for those days of the week for the shows they're yeah. gonna have. There's a lot of stuff that you're gonna get every week that you want for MMA, wrestling, and other stuff. So keep checking it out. Keep coming back to the feed. Subscribe, like, and uh, I hope to hear back from you other fellows out there. It's out there for you. Let's chat. Until then, we will see you guys next time right here on wrestling with reality i think effin for real will beat me the punch on a show on wednesday <laughs> yeah no they beat you all right they've already got more exposure everything simply by getting away from you and the problem is you're stuck with fucking uh, uh what's his name chris martin because nobody fucking wants that guy but you notice how he challenged us again Despite the fact that he wasn't talking about it uh, two minutes ago, never talked about it ever again there, man. Now here's seven challenges back to back. I believe they're doing a show, so I'll be back on Friday with another great show here on Wrestling With Reality. Me and Mr. Maxson have some great stuff planned for you guys on the Friday show. We're talking a bunch of different stuff with reality-based things, and me and Mr. Miller will probably have one over the next week, too. So That show he did that Friday with Mr. Maxson. Oh, boy. I can't wait to review that one. That's <laughs> That show is fucking tremendous. <laughs> yeah, uh, that TV review, that's getting done. <laughs> that's after that one. It, there's so many shows now. Like we, We're backed up here. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jeff Miller, the simple man, has not appeared on the feed at all. In that's weeks. a shame. Yeah. He seems like <laughs> such a fun guy. <laughs> I don't think he's done anything since that um, In Your House watch along, actually. Which is a shame because they were having such a great time. <laughs> they had four viewers and then all of a sudden it was 20,000 viewers. Well, you know how it would see, but those are, when you look at the AEW logic, it's the demo. Yeah. There were four Indian viewers, which counts as 5,000 uh, <laughs> humans. <laughs> Why would someone want to watch NXT In Your House but have. Uh, the Simple Man and John Wangland as the audio commentary track. <laughs> well, they're, they're big insiders. Like, sure, he didn't he not walk Don Severn to the ring? You know, heavily in demand, the uh, pro wrestler Don Severn. Keep coming back. Keep checking the shows out. Thanks for your support. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you all again later here on Wrestling with Reality and all the other great shows on this feed. So be good. Be safe. Wear a mask. Stay safe. Let's get out of this damn coronavirus crap. And uh, let's just be good to ourselves and one another. Until next time, signing off. Be good. Right. He seriously needs to fucking get an editor or work on that shit because... That goes on and on and on, and it's the same thing over and over. Like, he's one repetitive fucking psychopath. Yeah. 
instead of that being an hour and 16 minutes, it could have easily been 35 minutes. Because he doesn't have a plan. He has one feed, but he doesn't have a plan. <sighs> all right. Well, we'll wrap this one up. Thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did because we sure I, as hell did. All right. So I wanna, we want to thank um, Joe Feeney, Jeff Yapuncich, and Husey. And thank you for watching, everybody, and thank you for listening. We had a great time. It's one feed. Uh, the challenge has been levied out there. Be a man. And don't forget, flog that dolphin. <laughs>